Hi again. Okay, so in the last few videos we looked at kinetic energy and the work energy principle that said that the kinetic energy, uh, or actually that the net work done, that was, let me write it here, okay, that the net work done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. And we saw that kinetic energy, or we define kinetic energy as the energy that an object um, contains or the energy that an, uh, of an object by virtue of its motion. So because it's moving, it's got kinetic energy. Now we go get to potential energy. So this is kind of the energy that something has by virtue of its position. Okay, now what, well, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of boiled down to the f to understanding it as the in it as the potential it has to do work. Okay, um, and it has that potential because it's in the position to do work. Now, one very simple example is if I have an object that is on a cliff. Okay, so here I have a rock on the edge of a cliff and if I push that rock over that cliff it will be in motion when it is in motion it is um, being uh, displaced okay so it will have a displacement and why is it falling well it's falling of course because of gravity so there is a force acting on it so if we have a force and if we have a displacement then we have work being done Okay, but before that work is being done, it has the potential to do that work. And that potential is what we call potential energy. The energy um, it contains by virtue of its position. Okay, now potential energy we define with the formula U, okay, or E P, okay, energy potential. And the formula is the mass of the object times the gravitational constant, 9.8, times the height of that object. So this is the formula for potential energy. And uh, now let's just look at a scenario where we have a f an object on an incline. So there's our incline. And we have an object on that incline, let's say, it's a box okay so there's our box and because there is let's avoid any any sort of other force so let's say this is a very smooth surface so that there's no friction which obviously means that this this block is going to slide down so after a while we find that the object is here now so it started at this height okay that's its initial height and then after a while we measure it again and we find it has a new height okay that's its future height so the displacement okay the change in its height is obviously equal to its future height minus its initial height that's the change in its height however that's not really the displacement sorry I called the displacement just now the displacement is um, is measured on this slanted side so that's the displacement okay delta delta x and let's say this slope is at an angle of alpha now um, what is the relationship between delta x and delta h in other words the slanted side and this this side again can you just see how beautifully trigonometry is getting into play here? Because there we get our 90 degree triangle. Okay, if that is alpha, I hope you can see that this is alpha as well. And our delta x is the opposite side. Sorry, our delta h is the opposite side, our change in our height. And our delta x is our slanted side. So what we do notice here is that sine of alpha is equal to delta h over delta x. If we multiply both sides with a delta x, okay, and we divide both sides with the sine alpha, okay, on this side that cancels, on this side sine alpha, we get 
the not so surprising result that delta x is equal to delta h divided by sine of alpha. Now just keep this in the back of your mind for a little while and you will see where that comes into play. Okay. The next thing I want to know is I actually, my endeavor here, what I'm trying to do, and I maybe should have mentioned this earlier, is I want to work out what is the work that is being done by the gravitational force. Okay, so the work formula doesn't change. If I want work done by the gravitational force, I must take the force, the gravitational force, multiplied by the change in displacement, multiplied by cos of the angle between the displacement and the gravitational force, uh, sorry, the displacement um, and the gravitational force. Now, what is that angle between displacement and gravitational force? We'll look at that in just a minute, okay? Um, but if instead, I want to show you just here that th the gravitational force is downwards, okay? And since I have an object on an incline, there's my incline, there's my object, okay? My gravitational force is downwards. And you remember from an object on an incline that this gravitational force can be divided into two components or broken up into two components. One that is perpendicular to the surface and will cancel with the normal force, okay? So this is weight perpendicular one and it's the one that is parallel to the surface that I'm trying to calculate and we saw that we can now place that parallel one there okay that's the weight that's parallel to the surface and uh, if this is alpha I'm not going to show all of that again that is alpha as well so we notice that this is the weight that is doing or the component of the weight that is actually doing work because this component of the weight is in the direction of the displacement. The displacement is in this direction and the component of the weight parallel to the surface is in that direction. So if I can work out that component, I'm sorted. Then the angle here would just be zero. So let's see if we can do that. Here's my triangle. I'll draw it a bit nicer here. Uh, my triangle with that alpha and this is the weight uh, parallel to the surface and this is simply the weight. Weight is simply mass times gravity. Okay, so what we notice here is again it is the opposite and the hypotenuse that I have. Since that is the 90 degree angle that's the hypotenuse. And again this simplifies to, and this is why I said this was not so surprising, okay, because again the weight that is parallel to the surface in this case is equal to weight times sine of alpha. And again, I'm not going to go through all of this. We've done it before. Go and look back if, if you uh, forgot. Okay. But the weight that is parallel to the surface is equal to um, the weight times sine of alpha. Now, that means that is the force that's actually doing the work. So that's what I'm going to replace in here. Weight times sine of alpha. Okay, times delta x, but delta x I see also, okay, well, delta x can also be replaced with delta h over sine alpha, in other words, the change, so that's what I'm doing here, the change over in h over sine of alpha, and you can see why I did it, because lacquer, lacquer, those two can cancel, and we just have cos of zero. Why cos of zero? Because the component of the weight and the displacement is in the same direction. Okay, so that's why cos of zero is just one and this then simplifies to weight which is mass times gravity. Okay, that's weight is mass times gravity times delta H. Okay, does this look familiar? Well, not yet perfectly, but delta H we know that was just my final height minus my initial height. Okay, and when I multiply in the factor in front, and let's change a color to make this a bit more spectacular, okay, we get mass times gravity times final height minus mass. 
times gravity times initial height. And this is what I want you to see. Mass times gravity times height is simply potential energy. Okay? In other words, it's the potential energy at that point okay, is equal to mass times gravity times initial height okay, and the potential energy at this point is mass times gravity times final height okay. and here I notice this beautiful result is that the weight, the work done by the gravitational force is simply equal to the future potential energy minus the initial potential energy or simply the change in the potential energy. Isn't that beautiful? So, so far we know two things that the network done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy and we know that the work done by the gravitational force is equal to the change in the potential energy. I think those are two beautiful results and I hope you appreciate it as much as I do. I'll see you in the next couple of videos where we are looking at the application of this in a few examples. Enjoy.